This is one of the smallest frogs in North America. It's also one of the most northern amphibian species, extending up into the Northwest Territories and the Yukon. This tiny animal is the Boral Chorus Frog, Sudacris maculata. There are over 120 species of frogs and toads in the U.S. and Canada, and you've probably never heard of most of them. Many of these species are small and easily overlooked. The Boral Chorus Frog itself grows to a maximum length of roughly 30 millimeters, but many individuals never reach this size. Other similarly sized frog species include the well-known spring peeper, the three species of the cricket frogs, and the small hyla tree frogs, such as the pine woods tree frog, among others that also grow to roughly 30 millimeters. However, the smallest North American frog is the little grass frog, Sudacris ocularis, which reaches a maximum length of only 19 millimeters. Adult boral chorus frog individuals range from tan to olive green to dark brown colored, with three stripes going down their back that are often split into blotches. They also have a whiter stripe along the upper lip, and a dark brown stripe running through the eye and partway down the side. The hind legs also have dark spots or blotches, and the belly is white or cream colored. One feature that common large frogs, such as the leopard frog, lack, but is obvious in the boral chorus frog, is the granulated texture of the skin, as seen in this individual I found on Nose Hill in Calgary, Alberta. Boral chorus frogs are widespread throughout North America, as seen on this map, which is quite impressive for such a small amphibian species. To identify the boral chorus frog, from similarly sized species, the main feature to note is the three dorsal stripes, which differentiates it from most other small species in the United States and Canada, such as the X on the spring peeper, where they overlap in the east, as well as the only two dorsal stripes on the brown form of the Pacific chorus frog in the far west. And also, the spots or plain backs of the tailed frogs, cricket frogs, the little grass frog, and many of the other chorus frogs, among others. There are six species in the U.S. and Canada that also have three similar dorsal stripes. Four of these, the southern chorus frog, Sudacris nigrita, Brimley's chorus frog, Sudacris brimlii, the upland chorus frog, Sudacris ferirum, and the New Jersey chorus frog, Sudacris calmi, do not overlap in range with the boral chorus frog, having small ranges in the east. The spotted chorus frog, Sudacris clarki, which only overlaps with the boral chorus frog in Kansas, has lighter green blotches, which also form a triangle atop the head. The western chorus frog, Sudacris tricerata, is the most challenging to separate from the boral chorus frog, as they look almost identical. Though the boral chorus has longer hind legs, the best way to distinguish these two species is by their calls. Here's the boral chorus frog's call. And here's the western chorus frog's call.
In fact, the western chorus frog was originally considered a subspecies of the southern chorus frog, eventually being elevated to a species level, with the boreal, New Jersey, and upland chorus frogs all being subspecies, until they too were elevated to species level. Boral chorus frogs mate in the early spring, often before the ice has fully melted, when males call day and night at the edges of vernal pools, a type of ephemeral wetland, that are temporarily wet during the spring, in addition to any other pond with more than 10 centimeters of water. The males use the vocal sac, seen here, which females lack to make these loud calls. These frogs have external fertilization, where the female lays 150 to 800 eggs in groups of 5 to 100 that are attached to submerged vegetation, and the male releases sperm into the water to fertilize them. It takes a few weeks for the eggs to hatch into the aquatic larval stage, the tadpole. Roughly two months later, tadpoles undergo metamorphosis, to transition into their adult form. It then takes them one to two years for them to achieve their maximum size, generally living up to three years of age, though there are rare cases of them surviving for up to six years. Come winter, boral chorus frogs will hibernate under leaves or in shallow burrows, where they partially freeze, but through the use of antifreeze chemicals, such as glucose in their cells, and ice-nucleating proteins in their blood, causing just the intercellular fluid to freeze, boral chorus frogs can survive the winter, before defrosting comes spring. Boral chorus frogs belong to the order Anura, the frogs and toads, which is one of the major amphibian clades, within which it belongs to the family Hylidae, the tree frogs. Yes! These little guys are tree frogs, specifically hyaline tree frogs in the subfamily Hylinae, which is sister to the other two subfamilies. Within this subfamily, it belongs to the tribe Hylini, which is sister to the Lophio Hylini, the cask headed tree frogs, among others, from South and Central America. Within Hylini, Sudacris is sister to Acris, the cricket frogs. Sudacris maculata, specifically the boreal chorus frog, is sister to either Sudacris clarki, the spotted chorus frog, or Sudacris tricerata, the western chorus frog. Which makes sense since these are the hardest to tell apart. Boreal chorus frogs are carnivores and prey on a variety of small invertebrates, such as small spiders, flies, and beetles. In turn, these frogs fall prey to many birds, mammals, snakes, fish, and even larger frogs. This species is widespread, and most populations are healthy. However, cases of pollution and habitat loss can destroy localized populations. Specifically, the Great Lakes population in Ontario is threatened and continues to decline. If you're into herping and want to find these tiny frogs, go to wetlands in April to find them calling by the water's edge, or look under rocks near wetlands in the summer to find them hiding, making sure to carefully put the rocks back though, as they provide important habitat. Boral chorus frogs are an incredibly interesting species. Until next time on Animal Analysis. Subscribe, like, and share if you enjoyed. And comment on which species we should analyze next. And maybe check out one of these other videos.